Welcome to the BC Wine Show. I'm Marnie Martin with Vista Wine Group, and I'm interviewing some of BC's top, most successful winemakers and industry pros on how and why they do what they do and what they're up to next. So grab yourself a glass of wine, and I'll see you on the inside. Our guest today is the daughter of BC wine legend, Harry McWaters, and the current president and CEO of Evolved Cellars, Sibling Winery Time, and the premium label, the McWaters Collection. She also sits as a current chair on the BC Wine Institute and is a director of the Canadian Vintners Association. Please help me welcome Krista Lee McWaters. So welcome, Krista Lee. Um, it's so, I'm so grateful that we have an opportunity to sit and have a conversation today. Thanks for taking some time to join me. Ah, thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, now, for some of our viewers that don't know, you are the daughter of the legendary Harry McWaters, and you have grown up, obviously, in the wine industry. So tell us, what was, what was that like, being a young girl, and, and was that sort of an organic um, lead-in to the wine industry? Yeah, that's probably the most common question I get asked is, you know, what was it like growing up in a winery? And I, I don't know, what was it like not growing up in a winery? So, <laughs> you know, you know what it, you only know your own experience. So for us, yeah, growing up, you know, my family started Sumac Ridge in 1979 and we literally grew up with the wineries. So child labor was alive and well in our household. And it wasn't uncommon that, you know, we'd go to school, one of the moms would pick us up, uh, either my mom or my dad's partner's um, wife, and we'd all go to the winery after school, and bottling would start then. So once the kids were there, because there was enough people to work the bottling line, and uh, then we'd have dinner and, you know, supervised homework and then to bed while well, the uh, parents continued on. So it, uh, you know, it really instilled in an early age, I think, for, for me and my sister that, uh, you know, hard work, dedication, and that you, you have to live your passion. Uh, growing up, definitely my, my parents both encouraged us to do anything but the wine industry, which surprises a lot of people. Um, but it really uh, was important to my dad in particular that if we came back to this industry, that it was because it's what we wanted to do and it was our passion and, and we weren't living his dream. And I know not every family business has that scenario necessarily, but I think that that's really important because, you know, we generally want to do the opposite of what our parents say anyway, right? So I think it was a little reverse psychology on my dad's part, so... <laughs> that's crazy and that, well I love that because um, it does have to be something that you are passionate about I mean the wine industry is definitely um, something that you know it, it takes passion to to succeed in this in this industry so um, exactly. it's great that you came back to it organically now did you ever do anything I mean obviously you were I think in the hospitality industry and other things prior to coming into the wine world um, officially, but um, tell us about that. Uh, so growing up, yeah, after high school, you know, moved to Vancouver, and I think it's important that anybody that's grown up in a small town does actually leave it. Um, but it was very clear, and you know, growing up, I wanted to be either a helicopter pilot or a drama teacher, so two things completely different than the wine industry. Uh, but I found very shortly that once I moved away from home that I, I missed being part of the vineyard and the winery. And so my first job uh, in university was actually working for Andre's Wines, which is now Peller. So uh, I was a tour guide down there in Port Moody while I was going to university. And then I started my own wine agency while I was going to school as well. Just, uh, you know, I was the first uh, agent for Hillside uh, winery and for Wild Goose way back in the early 90s. So it definitely, I realized that it was in my blood and couldn't wait to get back to the Okanagan to uh, start working with the family again. So Fantastic. So, so now you are obviously um, president and CEO of um, Encore Vineyards. So that encompasses time and uh, Evolve, and then of course the McWaters Collection, which is your premium brand. So tell us a little bit about how those intertwine and how they work together. 
Sure, absolutely. So we have the three different brands. So we're located right uh, in the heart of downtown Penticton. So we're a little different uh, winery experience as well in that we are we are downtown. We purchased the old movie theater and converted it into our winery. So some people refer to us as an urban winery, and I don't generally use that term for a couple of reasons. One is we're Penticton, so we're really not that urban. <laughs> um, but also when I think urban winery, I think more um, outside in uh, Seattle and Woodenville or Walla Walla where there are more tasting rooms and then their winery is somewhere else. For us, this is our full production facility. So we do everything right in the heart of Penticton uh, except grow the grapes. So the truck comes down the back alley, we unload it, we do all of the processing, all of the winemaking happens here on site. So the facility, this, well, this is Time Winery and Kitchen here in Penticton, and we have a full portfolio of wines at Time. And then we also have Evolved Cellars, which we uh, focus primarily on sparkling and white wines. We do have a couple of reds as well, but at Evolve, our wines are meant to be very fresh, food forward, easy drinking, consumer friendly. Um, you know, they're your their everyday wines and they're, you know, meant to be delicious and satisfying without getting all caught up in the whole, you know, wine making hoopla sometimes. <laughs> um, and then we have McWaters collection and we currently have just two wines under that brand, our Meritage and our Chardonnay. And you know, they're big, they're bold. They were those of uh, your viewers that know my dad, they're, they're kind of like my dad was. Big, bold, a little bit in your face sometimes, but uh, you got <laughs> Well, is that, is it true that those are the, the two sort of legacy wines that he originally started with when he started making wine was the Meritage and the Chardonnay, is that right? Well, he was the first to produce Meritage outside of the United States, yes. So he's okay. always um, been very passionate about what Meritage is, being the blending and being basically, you know, the best of each varietal and taking that wine to that whole new level. So he spent, you know, a good number of years, I think about 25, uh, educating people on what Meritage is and why the Okanagan is such a great place to make, make a Meritage. And we do both a white Meritage and a red Meritage as well. Awesome. That's great. So um, how's, this, how's this year worked out for you? Obviously, things are a little bit different for everybody. Yeah. Um, how are things working out for you at the winery? And what, what are you guys doing right now? Are you open yet? Or Yes. Yeah, so we just uh, luckily were able to open the tasting room at the end of May. So May 30th, we reopened the tasting room uh, with obviously safety measures in place. You know, we're limited to groups of six people at a time. Uh, the nice thing about our facility is that we are, we have a very large space. So we're able to still social distance and still to welcome guests throughout the facilities. Also, when we built it, we, we licensed the entire facility. So our crush pad is uh, licensed, our cellar is licensed. Uh, so we've got a, a number of different opportunities to be able to give guests a different tasting experience. And then on the 4th of June, we also reopened uh, our kitchen. So we changed our concept a little bit this year uh, and we are now a wine and burger bar. So uh, a little more creative outside the box thinking burgers, but they pair so nicely with the wines and the team's just doing a fantastic job. So we're pretty excited. That's fantastic. So what about um, new releases this year? Do you have anything special and new that's coming out? We do, yeah. We're working on a couple of uh, new wines. I mentioned the Permit Waters collection. Uh, we just had the two, but we're actually ready to add a third wine to the lineup of Mick Waters. And we have a traditional sparkling. Uh, so it is a 2017 vintage, and we'll be releasing that uh, for the holiday season in December. Wonderful. Now I've heard through the grapevine that you are a little bit of a sparkling connoisseur <laughs> and that that's one of your favorite things. Um, of course, one of the questions I always ask is what's in your glass and uh, is there a particular sparkling that you love that is a BC sparkling that's not produced by your winery? Oh, um, you know what? I think BC does such a, you're right. I am a huge sparkling fan and anybody <laughs> 
there are very few days that go by that I don't have sparkling wine at all. Uh, but I think what is so fantastic for British Columbia is that we're such a great region to make sparkling wines. You know, we've got natural abundant acidity, which is what we need that just makes our, our sparklings just absolutely effervescent and, you know, shining and so food friendly, but you also don't need food with them. So, um, you know, they're great. Uh, what about if I say it had recently sparkling wise? Mm, there's so many great ones. You know, I think Summerhill does a fantastic job. I absolutely love the one from Noble Ridge. Uh, sea Lair Ranch makes uh, fantastic. The whole Summerhill gamut from Ariel to, you know, Sipes Brut is a classic as well. Um, just to pick one sparkling would be so, so difficult. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to have to pick just one. <laughs> it would be a crime. <laughs> um, I, I completely agree. And I'm, I'm a sparkling fan myself too. So <laughs> that's great. And, and it is hard to pick your favorite because there are so many good ones for sure. Yeah. <laughs> picking who your favorite child would be, I imagine, right? So. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, so what about your wine club up there now? I know you've got three different kind of wine clubs. You've got... Um, um, I believe you've got the Club Evolution, Timekeepers, and Club Encore. Are they all very similar? Well, they're a little bit different. So the Timekeepers and the Club Evolution, so obviously time is time, and, and Club Evolution is Evolve. Those wine clubs are four bottles that are shipped four times a year. They're selected by our winemaking team, and we give you an assortment of the wines throughout the year. And um, they're a set price. So the Club of Evolution is $110 and the Timekeepers $135. Then we also have our Club Encore, which is uh, a case twice a year. And that's your choice. So if you want a full case of Meritage, then we will send that. You get a 15% discount. So it's a great way to try some of the wines. Also with all three clubs, we have a number of um, special offers that we offer just wine club members. Uh, you also receive a discount at the winery and the restaurant when you come to visit us in Penticton. We are also working on a couple of new wines that will be wine club only. So, you know, you got to sign up for a newsletter and join the club to be uh, privy to those exciting new small releases that we're, that we're working on. Fantastic. That's great. So um, when people come out to the winery, obviously you've said you've licensed the entire facility. Um, so what kind of an experience can people expect? Do you do tours out there and what, what can they expect to see when they come out to visit? So we have a full restaurant. We do a number of different events. Now, obviously our events look a little bit different through, in, through COVID. Um, but as I mentioned, we do have quite a bit of space. So starting next week, we start our um, live music nights again at time. So all through the summer into October, every Thursday night, we have live music. Uh, we're limited to 50 people, but you've got lots of space to social distance and we're featuring all local artists uh, from Penticton this season. So we're really excited. You know, they're excited to get out and start playing because they've been isolating and at home as well. So to play in front of a, a live audience again, they're pretty excited. Uh, but we also offer a number of different uh, sit down tasting opportunities. Uh, for Evolve, we do a savor school. So we'll teach you how to savor a sparkling wine. Uh, we also do barrel tastings where you get to taste right out of the barrel as well. And then new for us this season is um, by advanced reservations, we're doing sparkling wine dinner. So uh, we're pairing different, our different sparkling wines with multiple courses uh, created by Chef A.K. Campbell, our executive chef here. Nice. Are those happening in the actual winery itself or in the restaurant? Yes, in the winery, right in the cellar. Awesome. That sounds fantastic. Wine and music and dinner go very well together. <laughs> So um, is there anything else that is new at the winery aside from um, the COVID situation that you want to talk about? Yeah, you know, we're just excited to be back open and to welcome people to the Okanagan. Uh, I think it's going to be a great summer. I think everybody, you know, is itching to get 
out. Uh, we know we won't see the international traveler, but luckily we're only a short drive from Vancouver. So we hope that people join us in the Okanagan. We've got lots of open space, lots of activities. I know the wineries are dying to see guests. So we just encourage everybody to come and visit us in the Okanagan. Well, thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with me today. And if you haven't been out to the Time Winery and Kitchen, make sure you put that on your agenda for this summer if you're in the Penticton area. And uh, if you're in any of the local stores, don't hesitate to look for it. And I will put a link to the actual website in the description below so you can actually check out the selection of wines. And uh, I hope we get a chance to do this again really soon. So do I. Thanks, Marnie. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care. And now, I'd love to hear from you. If you have a question for a future guest or a comment, please put it in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and the big red subscribe button right down below. Thanks for joining us today on the BC Wine Show. And until next time, stay well, be kind, and enjoy responsibly.